Smash Bros. Well then, we'll see who we're up against. Wait, is that Super Mario? That is correct, Dust. Mr. Video Game himself. I thought he'd be taller. Well, you are a flying fidget. True. Hey, wait, what? He may be old, but don't think the fight will be easy. If you're not careful with the dust storm, he can deflect your projectiles and send them straight back at you. He also has a flood which can easily push you off the edge. I, I just noticed. Why does he have an M on his hat? I think that's a branding thing. Hmm. Maybe he forgot his own name and needs to look at his hat. Quick, Dust! Look at your hat! Your name might be on there! Maybe later. Ah, giant monkey! I think he's a gorilla. That is Donkey Kong. A big gorilla that can pack a mean punch. Any advice on him? Watch out for when he slams the ground. It can cause a massive shockwave and knock you off balance. Donkey Kong also has a charge punch. One blow from that can knock you off the edge. Why is he wearing a tie? Is he dressing smart? Well, some people like to be professional for the occasions, Fidget. Well, yeah, but uh, in a fighting tournament? Maybe he has an interview to go to later. Let's feed him quick then! We don't want him to miss the interview! I, uh, I gotta say, Dust, this guy creeps me out. Why is that? He's, he's just staring at me. Quick, quick, put your hand on him so he can't stare at me! Link is the warrior from Hyrule. He's a skilled sword fighter, much like you are. Great, a perfect duel with sword on sword. Wait, Dust, he's also skilled in archery and bombs. He can fire arrows seemingly on a whim, and has explosives that he can trigger with the press of a button. <sighs> so much for a fair fight. I mean, I don't know. You yeah, have me, so would that have been a fair fight to begin with? <sighs> Good point. Who is that man? And why is he so quiet? That's a woman. Her name is Samus and is one of the best bounty hunters from space. Her arm cannon? It reminds me of some of the ships Gaius used. She does have technology on her side, allowing her to shoot lasers and drop bombs. Her ammo count is seemingly endless. Hmm, something tells me we weren't the first to think she was a man. And something tells me we won't be the last. Come on. Watch yourself, Dust. That's Dark Samus. Dark Samus? Isn't it just Samus in a darker armor? While it may seem like that, Dark Samus is a being of Phazon that was created from Samus' DNA. They may be similar, but its skills are a bit different in power. I don't think fighting this dark counterpart will be any different than fighting the real thing. It's thinking like that which will get your head cut off in the field of battle, Fidget. Never underestimate your opponent. Aw, look at that cute green thing! This can't be my next opponent, surely. It is indeed, Dust. That is a Yoshi. It may seem cute, but it has a big appetite, and you're next on its menu. Wait, you mean that thing can eat dust? Correct, and even have you for dessert. With its tongue, it can swallow you whole, put you in an egg, or launch you off the stage. That sounds way more gross than it needs to be. I wonder how it works. Is it painful for him? What do you mean? Well, it turns us into an egg. Is it quick? Will Aura pierce the insides? Uh, I think it's best if we don't question it. Hey look, Fidget. I think it's one of the leftover marshmallows from camp last night. Yes, I knew that it went somewhere. Fidget, stop. That isn't a marshmallow. That's Kirby. Aw, oh, you look so delicious. Watch out for Kirby, Dust. He can inhale you, spit you back out, at the cost of copying your abilities and looks. Maybe he can wear your hat too, Dust, but pink! Copy my abilities is enough, Fidget. I'm still trying to figure out how that tiny thing could do a dust storm. I'm very intrigued to find out for myself, actually. Oh, hey, he's got fur and he's wearing clothes like you, Dust. You think you know him? That is unlikely, Fidget. This is Fox McCloud, a top pilot from the Lilac system. He's armed! Watch yourself, Fidget! That blaster he wields isn't enough to knock you back. 
but it can add up small increments of damage. Before you realize it, he'll have you right where he wants you for a finishing blow. Got it. Anything else? Watch out for his shield. Should Fidget use her abilities, they could be deflected back at you. It's weird how he wears a jacket in combat boots. Uh, wait, does, does he have normal legs? I've been meaning to ask Fidget. How come you don't wear clothes? The Nimbat clan can wear clothes, but we're not hiding anything. I just don't like them. They're too starchy. Plus, I won't be able to get my wings through. I'm learning new things about you every day. Aww, look at that cute mouse! I wanna pet him! Stop! I wouldn't pet that mouse if I were you. Not unless you want to be electrocuted. Wait, what? That's a Pikachu. An electric-type Pokémon. Considering the opponents we faced, I assume it's not wrong to assume it has a few tricks up its sleeve? You are correct, Dust. Though Pikachu may seem harmless, if you're above it, it can and will summon a thundercloud to strike you down, as well as other electrical attacks to give it an edge in combat. Hey, I can do that too! I learned that from Tethys! You think it would have any effect on the Pikachu? There's only one way to find out. Let's go! It would appear you're facing Luigi, Mario's younger brother. Is he any different from Mario? I doubt it. I mean, they look the same, though what's the L on his head stand for? Loser? He wouldn't have that on his hat. It's obviously L for Luigi. Or it could be the symbol of the proud servant in the ancient Moonblood tongue. Wait, don't distract me. Dust, watch out for his cyclone attack. If you're not careful, he could spin for height, as well as give you a flurry of punches. Well, for a younger brother, he's certainly got more moves than the older sibling. Indeed he does. After his adventures in the ghost hunting business, Luigi decided to bring the poltergust with him. Keep fighting and you might have a plunger on your face and get dragged towards him. I, uh, I still think the L means something else. You think the L is real? Just drop a fidget. Hey Yara, I don't feel comfortable fighting a child. Ness is more than your average child dust. He has PSI abilities, allowing him to perform moves such as the PK Thunder and the PK Fire. It's still a child, Aura. Sometimes a warrior must swallow his own pride dust. Ness can also summon a PSI Magnet, which can absorb projectiles and even heal himself. Wait, so would he take my attacks and essentially eat them? That's weird. <laughs> Not as weird as Smobub wanting a doll of you. <laughs> Please, let's just forget that. Ness can also use his PK Thunder either for height or to make sure you don't get back on stage. Be careful, Dust. Of all the fighters we faced, he seems... the most out of place. That's Captain Falcon, pilot of the Blue Falcon for the F-Zero races. A racer in this tournament? Now I've seen everything. Captain Falcon is famously known for his two iconic moves, the Falcon Punch and the Falcon Kick, both as painful as each other if you're not careful. He named moves after himself? Someone has an ego. Yeah, this is coming from Mr. Dust Storm and Ariel Dust Storm. Hey, don't look at me! I didn't pick those names! Personally, I think they're good names. Wait, is that Kirby? No, that's definitely something else. That's Jigglypuff, another Pokémon. A very floaty one at that. Floaty? How so? Just put it like this, you have a hard time making it fall because it can easily float back up with its jumps. Maybe it can fly? Let's not come to conclusions, Vegit. Watch out for Jigglypuff's song. If it sings near you, you'll be put to sleep, leaving yourself open for its deadly rest attack. Wait, does it attack you when you sleep? Or does it attack by sleeping? I'm certainly not going to find out in this fight. Well, she certainly likes pink. That's Princess Peach, ruler of the Mushroom Kingdom. A princess in this tournament instead of running her kingdom? Wait, I think I read about her. Doesn't she get kidnapped? Like, a lot? She may be an in infamy for the longest kidnap record, but she's no pushover. She can swing at you if you let your guard down and use her hips as a sideways strike. Makes you wonder why she doesn't use those moves to, you know, break out? It would certainly make sense. It's not like we lose or gain abilities when we leave the tournament. Just knowledge. Focus on the battle at hand, you two. She is our next opponent after all. I hope you're not shy of hitting girls, Dust. It's not the fact I'm attacking a woman, but the fact I'm attacking royalty. Oh, it's... another princess. Should we bow to this one? That's Princess Daisy, ruler of Sarasalan. Sarasalan? I've never heard of that. Best not to question it. Daisy was once kidnapped too, then rescued by the aid of Mario in one of his adventures. Wait, so he's seeing two princesses? Is this for some sort of tax evasion scheme or something? Daisy is similar to Peach in the way she moves, so if you had a strategy for one, it may work for the other. Got it. Thanks, Ara. 
Wow, this must be the Bowser guy I've heard about. He's definitely how I pictured him. You pictured a giant spike-shelled turtle? Absolutely! You're telling me you didn't with a name like Bowser? Bowser is king of the Koopas, and a rather quick king at that. So, what's the best strategy for him? He can breathe fire, but will burn out if he holds it for too long. However, he does have a grab attack. He grabs you? How is that any different from us grabbing him? This move is different, as he will jump up in the air with you and slam down to the ground, crushing you with his weight. Ouch. I hope your back will be able to handle that dust. My back is fine. I'm not old yet. I think. Just keep in mind, if he does it near an edge, he will lose his grip as the two of you will fall, making him be the first to go and give you a chance to recover. You face the ice climbers, Nana and Popo. Wait, are they a couple? I think they're siblings. They look alike. That's unrelated right now, Dust. The ice climbers work together, but there is a way to get the better advantage. What do you recommend? Try and get Nana out of the picture. Once she's gone, Popo won't have as much of an advantage. Take down the partner to weaken the main fighter. It'd certainly be like that if you were gone, Fidget. I wouldn't be able to continue without your assistance. Aww, you're making me blush. Oh, a ninja! He looks so cool! I see you've encountered Sheik, a proud fighter of the Sheikah clan. So, am I keeping my eye out for daggers and shurikens? Daggers, yes. Shurikens, no. Sheik can ready a few and throw them when she's ready. It's a move you won't see coming, that's for certain. That's very helpful, Ara. Also, watch out for a kick attack. She could bounce to and fro away from you if she gets a direct hit. Wait, that's a girl? She certainly doesn't look it. I think there's more to her character than we both think. Oh, hey look, I think we're fighting another princess. That's Princess Zelda, ruler of the Kingdom of Hyrule. She can cast spells that she uses to her advantage on the field of battle. A lot of royalty in this tournament, I noticed. Yeah, next thing you know, I'd be seeing Mayor Bran here. Zelda's attacks are magic focused. She can even summon a suit of armor to send out and attack you on her behalf. Royalty isn't without its soldiers, it would seem. It could be worse. She could follow General Gaius. Let's not bring him up constantly. We're having fun here, after all. Hey, a doctor! Say, Dust, you can have him go look at that cough that's been bothering you. <coughs> Good idea. Maybe do that after the fight, Dust. He is your next opponent. He is? Wait a minute. Isn't that just Super Mario? It may seem it, but he is a little bit different. Donning the doctor jacket, he has some medical-based attacks, such as the pill attack. He attacks with pills? As in, he literally throws pills at us? I think I'm gonna want to see his medical license before he does a checkup. You and me both. Wait a minute. That looks familiar. It should, because that's Pichu, the pre-evolved Pikachu. So it has similar moves? Similar moves, yes. However, these are hindrance to Pichu, as it damages itself with each attack. Wait, why would it have a move that can hurt itself? Maybe it didn't have time to work out the kinks before it evolved? Just watch yourself, Dust. Don't think you can win by Pichu harming itself all the time. Say, is that a bird? Correct. That's Falco Lombardi, a member of the Star Fox crew. Unlike Fox, his blaster does a bit more damage and can knock you back if you're not careful. So he's similar to his captain then. Got it. Similar, yes, but he's a bit more ruthless than his captain. A wild one, you could say. I'll keep that in mind then. Hey, uh, if Star Fox has a fox and a falcon... Where are you going with that, Fidget? Well, do you think they'll welcome an invad? Sure, you can be the mascot. Hey! Oh, look, Dust! He has a sword and he's almost the same shade of blue as you! That's Marth, a noble warrior. What tricks does he have? His skills are similar to yours, actually. He can send out a flurry of strikes like the Dust Storm. Interesting. This might be a fun fight. Be wary, because he does have a counter. One false move and he has the upper hand. He has blue hair. I wonder if that's his natural color. Well, Fidget, I'm blue, don't forget. Eh, I think it's more of a teal than blue. You seem to have encountered Lucina, a proud leader who had always faced battle before her men. A leader both proud and noble. She's kind of like you. She's skilled at the sword, but could do more damage on the side rather than the tip, unlike her ancestor, Marth. Wait, she's a descendant of Marth? But how? Does this tournament break the rules of time? Focus, you two. You are still fighting. She's similar to her ancestor in her moves, but her damage output isn't the same as him. Is that Link? Something seems different. That's young Link, armed with the Deku shield and the Kikiri sword. 
He will fight with all of his might. So, Link is a child of the Slab of Wood? It would seem that way. But I'm pretty sure there's much more to it than that. Quite right to assume such a thing, Dust. His small posture could make him quick on the attacks. You never know what he'll do next. It's a child, Aura, not a bag of magic tricks. Well, considering that his future self could pill all bombs that could be remotely detonated, we well, really can't jump to conclusions about his younger self. That's... a fair point. Who's this guy? I don't know, but my sixth sense makes me feel... nothing but darkness. Not just you. I sense it too. That would be the Demon King Ganon. However, he is in his Gerudo form known as Ganondorf. What do you know of his abilities? Not a lot, I'm afraid. But I do know if you're close, he can strike you down with his sword with a devastating swing. Watch out for the sword. Got it. Are you doing okay, Fidget? Um, I'm fine. I'm just sensing the darkness and rage. Like an anger that's been carried out since ancient times. Focus on the task for now. You'll be able to block it out. This creature seems to float around. Ah, you've encountered Mewtwo, a genetically engineered Pokemon. Well, the second experiment, Mew 1 didn't go so well. I think that's just a name, Fidget. Keep in mind that Mewtwo's jumps do give him some extra height, so it's relatively easy to get back on stage for him. Anything else? Try to avoid his gaze, Dust. If you're not careful, he can paralyze you and easily get in a hit. I reckon he thinks, Rawr! You're looking in my eyes when he does it. I'm... I'm sure he does. Hey, look! He's got red hair! Wow, that's an interesting observation, Fidget. Of all things. Well, we've seen blue hair, green hair, but never red. Don't distract yourself. That's Roy, a skilled swordsman. What's so special about him? He incorporates flames with his attacks. If he recovers near you, you can get burnt quite easily. Huh. I wonder if he has magic inside of him. Maybe. Then again, you learn abilities and can summon fire and electricity easily. He also has a powerful stab that can penetrate the ground. Roy would use this as a last resort to finish you as it damages himself as well. Got it. Hmm. Crom seems... familiar. That's because he's the father of Lucina. Huh. Father and daughter entering a tournament. Fortunate he's fighting us and not Lucina. I wouldn't mind seeing the aftermath of that on Father's Day, though. Moving on. He has an attack pattern that's a mixture of Roy's and Ike's, so you might need to mix and match your strategies here. Got it. Happy Father's Day! Sorry, the card got ripped when you attacked me with that sword a few months ago. Fidget, concentrate, please. You seem to have encountered Mr. Game & Watch. Wait, seriously? I thought that was just a paper cutout. Mr. Game & Watch has been around for years, which explains his primitive look. So, what? Is he going to paper cut us off the stage? Although his flat design may be just that, it certainly isn't one to scoff at. Get too careless and he'll strike you with his hammer. Should it be a number 9 if he can send you flying off the stage? He's stronger than I realized, and yet he can deal devastating blows with such a thin figure. I'm still trying to work out how that works. Could we just sidestep from the attack? I don't think the rules will approve of that. Aww, look! Kirby got himself a cute mask! And a sword! And... wings. That's not Kirby, is it? Correct, that isn't Kirby, but rather Meta Knight. A rival to Kirby, if you will. I assume he's no pushover. Far from it. He could dish out a flurry of attacks, and could drill through the air to chase you down, and summon a fire tornado on a whim. I... don't see how that makes sense. Makes about as much sense as a flying nymph out who's scared of heights. Hey! You're fighting Pit, it seems. So it would seem. But he seems... different from the others. He's an angel. He serves the goddess Palatina. Good observation. Unfortunately, that isn't the case. But he does have wings, he can only fly for a brief moment. He uses those moments to get back on the stage. Oh, I'm sure he can fly. He's just scared of heights, too. <laughs> Wait, do you think that's the case? Why don't you ask him? Regardless, I advise caution if he uses Guardian Orbitals and Upper Dash Arm, as they're both excellent at deflecting projectiles. It seems even angels need some extra help when fighting mortals. Did Pit just decide to put on some black clothing? Watch out, Dust. That's Dark Pit. He's Pit's doppelganger after the Mirror of Truth was destroyed. How do you destroy a Mirror of Truth? Do you just use a hammer? Maybe a paradox? Oh! Paradox hammer! Hi-ya! Getting back on topic, 
He's like Pip, but not limited to serving the goddess Palatina, giving him better weapons in comparison. Is it me, or does she seem familiar? That's Samus Aran, however she's not in her bounty hunter attire, and in her Zero suit. Zero suit? So, she's a better fighter? While her previous suit was better equipped with weapons and strong protection, this outfit gives her more flexibility while fighting. She is also armed with a stun pistol for increased defense. So, in other words, I'll have to watch my moves carefully as she can use her agility to get the upper hand. That is correct, yes. She can also jump higher in this Zero suit. Why not just keep the suit and ditch the armor? I don't even know about bounty hunters, but I'm certain she faces many dangers that the armor can shrug off. Oh. Hey, we should ask Fail to make you some armor like that! Later, Fidget. Let's focus on the fight. Oh, something reeks of garlic! That would be Wario then, a rival to Mario. I can smell that from here. His smell is one thing, his appetite is another. Get too close and he'll open his jaws for a serious chomp attack. Well, I know what I'm avoiding. However, get too far and he'll hop on his bike and drive towards you. Biting and biking. Anything else? Keep an eye on his gut. There will be a point where it gets big and he'll unleash a deadly fart attack. We're literally facing an opponent that uses bites and farts as attacks. <laughs> and smell better not sink up my fur. You have encountered Solid Snake Dust, a man known for his immense sneaking abilities. Alright, so what's so special about him? He has many weapons in his arsenal that he won't hesitate to unleash. Grenades, a rocket launcher, and even landmines. If he grabs you, he will also attempt to stab your neck. He came a bit too prepared for this fight. Wait, don't those weapons require ammunition or something? That's a point. There's not much on his body to imply he's got a lot of ammunition. Apparently the bandana on his head gives him infinite ammo. Infinite ammo? How does it even work? The more I learn about these fighters, the more questions are raised. Ugh, another swordsman. Yes, you have encountered Ike, a hero in his prime. He's certainly been working out in his spare time. With Ike's attack, some leave him open for an easy counter. If you can go behind and take him out, or dodge back and let Fidget take over, you'll be able to land some hits. Speaking of time, I've always wanted to ask, what's the average lifespan of a Nimbat Fidget? Well, Nimbat clans sometimes have different lifespans depending on which one. Most Nimbats in mine can live upwards of 40 to 50 years. And... how old are you? Hm. Never ask a lady your age, Dust. It's incredibly rude. Hey, Ara, I'm a bit confused here. Am I fighting the child or the Pokémon? You're fighting the Pokémon, Dust. The trainer can bring out one of three. A Squirtle, an Ivysaur, and a Charizard. Oh wait, so it's three and one? That's a bit unfair. I'm pretty sure if I knock out one, it still counts as a knockout from me. You're correct to assume, Dust. When one's knocked out, another will be summoned from the Pokeball. Wait, they come out of those tiny red and white balls? But the dragon's huge. How does that even work? I don't know, Dust. You were able to fit a bunch of black sheep in your inventory. I wouldn't rule this out of the realm of possibilities. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I'll talk to that kid about lending me a spare. Why did you look at me when you said that? Aww, that monkey's got a t-shirt and a hat! That's more than your average monkey, Fidget. That's Diddy Kong, Donkey Kong's nephew. So, what's special about him? He may be small, but don't let that fool you. If he feels the mood to, he can bring out his peanut gun and send a deadly shot of peanuts your way. Peanuts? That's not so bad. Maybe not, but remember he is shooting them out as opposed to throwing them. Maybe they'll have a better punch when fired out of the barrel of a gun. Good thing I'm not allergic. It looks like Ness brought a friend along to the tournament. Lucas is similar to Ness, Dust. He has the same PSI abilities. Similar to Ness? I shall name him... Zen! Humorous, Fidget. With Lucas, you need to watch out for his PK freeze. Once frozen in the attack, it gives him the chance to land more hits into you and build up the damage. The more I look at people like these, the more I question just what their worlds are like. Are they as war-torn as Falana? Are they more dangerous with magic being added to the mix? Uh, I don't know, Dust. But maybe we should focus on the tournament for now. Whoa! He's fast! That's Sonic the Hedgehog. Mario's rival since his creation. His attacks are a mix of speed and power. So I have to be quick on the attack? Perhaps not. Though he may run fast, he can still be hit. If you time the dust storm just right, you may be able to land a hit and knock him off balance long enough for a strike. Huh. He only wears gloves and shoes. 
What's your point? Well, you're wearing clothes, and you're both made of fur. Do you think you would freeze in the Blackmore Mountains? I very much doubt that, Fedjeff. I mean, you're not wearing any clothes, and you're just fine. Yeah, but I've got a thicker coat, and he's got some skin visible. Dust, your next opponent is King DDD. Wait, is that a crown on his head? Or is that a hat? I would think it'd be a crown, especially if he's a king. Then again, that Bowser guy is a king and he doesn't wear a crown. Good point. Can I finish off what I was saying? Dust, watch out for his hammer. If built up long enough, his swing could deal finishing blow, especially if you've taken a few hits beforehand. I'm surprised he can swing that thing. But I guess the weight would be enough to give him the better downwards blow. Many masters before me have preferred swords with weights at the end to give them the advantage, and have fallen in the past. Yeah, but a hammer and sword are very different. Who's this guy, Ara? And why is he pulling colorful things out of the ground? You are facing Olimar, an astronaut who found himself on the planet that the Pikmin live. Those are the colorful things you see him pull. So he uses them to attack? Precisely. Each Pikmin have different traits, and when thrown to you, they will latch on and keep attacking. If he was to get back up, he'd have to carry them with him. I can fly, and I wouldn't have to do that. Correct, Fidget. The more Pikmin Olimar has pulled out, the heavier his recovery will be, giving Dust the chance to finish him off for an easy off-screen. I know it's a Pokemon, but it looks a little bit like a dog. It seems you've encountered Lucario, a fearsome foe indeed. So, what's special about it? Do you see the aura around it? The more damage it takes, the stronger it gets. While it would be easier to knock out after you've given it enough hits, it could very easily turn the tide back in its favor. Oh, so it's kind of like me. The hungrier I get, the more violent I get. I think damage and food are completely different means of requirements. Oh, I disagree, Dust. I disagree. <laughs> Is that a robot? It's certainly metal, that's for certain. That's Rob, the robotic operating buddy, a machine as old as time. So operates well for an old machine, but I don't know. Rob seems on the nose. Maybe FCR would have sounded a bit better? Pay attention to the light on its head. When at its brightest, it could fire a powerful laser which could stun you for a bit if you're caught. Wait, what's the blue light on its side? That's Rob's fuel. For recovery, it jets into the air. If you look closely, it goes to yellow, then black. Time it right, and you can send it flying with no chance of extra fuel. Oh, I'm gonna try talking to it! Beep boop, I am Robot Fidget, please insert girder! Something tells me if it had feelings, it'd be more offended at that attempt. How big are those eyes? And I thought I had big eyes. That's Toon Link, a different Link from another timeline. Another timeline? How does that make sense? This is the third Link we faced, and we faced someone's ancestor. Are you even surprised at this point? Focus. Toon Link carries such weapons as a big arrow, a boomerang, and bombs which will explode after a certain time. Got it. I assume his shields can block projectiles? You're correct, but only when he's standing still would he ready his guard from the front. You also need to be wary of his final smash. The trifles of courage will give him more than enough to send slashes of a thousand warriors your way. Oh boy, a small, cute Link, but can and will slice and dice us. Fun. Oh, come on, Fidget. Be Moody's my job. Be careful, Dust. You have encountered Wolf, leader of the bounty hunter group Star Wolf. So, he's an enemy of Star Fox, then? They're not really subtle with that, are they? Like Star Fox, he has his own reflector. Should you just use Fidget, he'll be able to reflect the projectiles back. Oh boy, he's gonna be fun to fight. Watch out for his Wolf Flash. He will leap to you and attack with his claws. Guess he spends time on his claws daily. If he uses them as a weapon, he'd probably gnaw on them daily just to make them sharper. I know I do that often. How do you think I took down King Horn? Let's... not remind ourselves of that. Yeah! What is that? Hmm? What's wrong, Fidget? Look at them! They're staring into my soul! I guess you've encountered the villager then. Don't let their looks deceive you, Dust. They are a formidable opponent. So, what moves have they got? They have various tools that they borrowed from the village they take care of. They're a mare? Who elected those soulless eyes? Fidget, please focus. The villager could do various tasks, such as watering plants to make a tree appear, to which they'll cut down and knock you out if you're not careful. 
as well as digging a ditch or dropping a bowling ball on your head. Bringing bowling balls to a tournament? I wonder if the other fires got concussions from the villager. Oh look, it's Mega Man! Yeah! I've heard so much about him from Pit! He looks so cool! And Mega Man is indeed a good fighter. Take it the powers from previous robot masters he's defeated in the past. A fighter of many weapons. I'll give him credit for that. He will be a fun one to fight. He does prefer ranged attacks, and has abilities from such robots as Metal Man, Woods Man, Slash Man, and various others. It seems their creator didn't take too long to think of names. He looks so awesome! Hey Dust, after the fight, see if you can get him to sign your sword! I'll be sure to ask him. I'm right here, you know. I don't want ink on my ancient handcrafted body. Hey Dust, uh, when was the last time you exercised? Exercised? What do you mean? Well, I, I mean, yeah, we walk around a lot, but have you ever done any stretches? You know, to get out those stiff joints? I... fail to see why you're asking, Fejef. Enough of that, onto the Wii Fit Trainer. The trainer exercises daily and uses stretches and other moves in their attacks. Also focus on their deep breathing technique. You could heal them and give them more strength, but could take longer to complete the next time if you stop them. Come on, Dust! Let's do some push-ups right now! Come on! One! Two! Three! I'm not doing push-ups. Wait, you're still flying! What are you pushing, the air? Hm. Fun killer. Wow, she's beautiful. That would be Princess Rosalina, the ruler of the Luma race. The ruler of the what now? Oh, I've heard of the Lumas. They're a race of star creatures that evolve into things like stars, power stars, and sometimes even black holes. Yes, I believe that clan you and I were in taught you and your siblings of the Luma race. So what can Rosalina do? She uses her lumas to her attack, and when sending one out, it will punch and kick to protect his mother. So, what would happen if I killed it? The lumas would die to protect their mother, but knocking out one won't leave Rosalina defenseless, and she can easily summon another to aid by her side. The lumas are her children that are willing to protect her. Do you think this could have been Fuse? If he wasn't corrupted from Gaius' wrath, then maybe. But, let's not worry about that for now. Your next opponent is Little Mac, a professional boxer where he's from. You know, of all the fighters we have encountered, he seems the most... generic. Good to know I'm not the only one who realized that. Little Mac is a formidable fighter. His only downside is that he's not very good in the air. In fact, that's his greatest flaw, which is why he stays on the ground. When reading up about him, I noticed something called a KO punch. Right you are, Fidget. When dishing out the punches and receiving them, he will build it all into one punch. The KO punch. Get hit by it, and you can forget about recovering in time. Have you ever done any boxing, Dust? I don't recall doing any, but I'm not that raw when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Besides, R is a much handier tool to have. Huh, that thing must be cold. Hmm? What do you mean? Well, look, it's wearing a scarf. That's actually not a scarf, Fidget. That's Greninja's tongue. Ew! And its tongue? How'd it get so long? I guess the cat got it too many times. As the name would imply, Greninja is a ninja-based Pokemon, using such abilities as water shurikens and katanas of water. We've never faced any ninjas in Falana, if at all now that I think about it. Actually, there is a clan of warriors that fight in the shadows. I am one of the blades of Elysium guided by the Nimbak clan. Another is guided by said ninja clan. Less backstory, more fighting tips against Tongue Ninja. Greninja is a counter move, which you can use to vanish and take opponents from behind. Plan your moves wisely when fighting it, Dust. Well, this is an interesting fighter. It looks like it's not from any of the worlds that have merged to be in this tournament. That is a me, a fighter of many faces and identities. So, it's a master of disguise? Not quite. The Mii's are a race that are not bred, but rather created. Created by omnipotent beings who make them to match their perfect image. It's rumored that one being can make a million at a time. That's a scary thought. No two Mii's are the same, Dust. They've adapted different fighting styles and moves. You need to be extremely careful when you fight. The Mii could do something you would least expect. We'll play it out and see how this goes. Oh look! It's the goddess Palutena! An actual goddess? A part of that is still hard to believe. In a way, she's quite similar to Lady Tethys back in Mudpot. 
While Palutena is here, she isn't as powerful for the tournament as she is normally. So, she weakened herself to fight mortals? I guess even gods can get bored sometimes. She can use her magic to give herself the upper hand, such as reticles, a counter, and even a reflect barrier. Well, this'll make things entertaining. I hope she doesn't call the life thread for us if we win. Do you think she's a spiteful goddess? Well, the other fighters are still here, so probably not. Look, it's Pac-Man! Oh, so it is. I wondered when I was going to meet him. Pac-Man is a very old fighter, even older than Super Mario himself. I certainly doubt he'll be a pushover, though. Correct. He and the ghosts have formed a temporary alliance as he uses them in his smash attacks. Great! So if we avoid his attacks, we could get some easy KOs in! Not quite, Fidget. If you get him off the stage, he'll use dot trails and trampolines to get himself back up. He won't be one to give up easily, let's just say that. Well, it seems the classic will give us a major run for our money. Let's get going, Fidget. Be wary, Dust. You face Robin. They don't seem that different from Martha and Ike. Never underestimate your opponent, Dust. Robin has fought many battles in their past. They carry the Levin Sword and a book on fire and lightning-based magic attacks. Two different kinds of magic? That must be hard to remember. It is. However, they can only use a certain number of spells at once before the book is disposed of. If you want to show patience for this, you'll find yourself an opening. So it seems you're playing the waiting game then. Even warriors must learn patience, Dust. Isn't that boy carrying one of the Blades of Elysium? It's got a mysterious aura around it. Don't underestimate the Monado, Fidget. It's too advanced of technology to have been made around my time of creation. Shulk is one of the only wielders of the Monado. How skilled of a fighter are we dealing with, Aura? Shulk is a very skilled fighter, Dust. Using the Monado, he can have certain glimpses into the future. See into the future? That's a big advantage. He can also use the Monado to give him abilities, which can weaken him in other areas. If he was to use the shield boost, he won't run as fast. Or if he wanted to make the Monado stronger, he'd have less of a chance to knock you off the stage. I see. So, if I keep those weaknesses in mind, I might have the upper hand next in no time. Hey, is... is that Bowser? I think that's his son. Bowser's a father? Correct, Dust. Bowser Jr. wanted to join his father in the fight, and even had a clown car made for him to give him a better advantage. Huh. So what are we dealing with? Bowser Jr. could summon sword blades, mecha coopers, and cannonballs to aid him in this fight. And should he fall from the stage, he will eject from the clown car to get back up, with another summoning when he lands. The car itself looks sturdy. I don't think we'll have a good shot at him. True, but we can rack up the damage. And should Bowser Jr. need to eject, he'll be vulnerable enough for extra damage. I wonder if they're related to Bowser Jr. or not. Most likely, they're in a clown car of their own. That would be the seven Koopalings that have aided Bowser in the past. Contrary to popular belief, they're actually not related to Bowser or Bowser Jr. However, they are related to each other and have their own squadron of Koopa Troopers in the Bowser's army. That's an interesting family tree to see. They are identical to Bowser Jr. in the way they fight. So if you fought him, then you fought the others. I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Thanks, Aura. Aww, it's a cute little puppy! And a duck as well. The Duck Hunt duo, a companion to one another that joined the tournament after Mario himself invited them in. A duck and a dog as friends. It's certainly an interesting matchup. While they may be named as a duo, some have argued them to be a trio as they could summon a gunman from their past who would attempt to shoot you before disappearing. These fighters have so many tricks up their sleeve. The Duck Hunt duo can also throw frisbees which will be shot down and could deal you some damage, as well as an empty can that will bounce with each shot. Wait, then who's shooting the items? That's... one not even I know, I'm afraid. Hey, isn't that Ryu? Oh, it is! I heard he's very skilled in martial arts! That and the technique of the Hado, let's not forget. So, what should I keep in mind with him? Ryu can summon a fireball known as a Hadouken, a technique he has mastered over the years, as well as the Hurricane Kick, also known as the Tatsumaki Senpu Kyaku. Fireballs and the kick that summons hurricanes. Wow. You're looking too deep into that, Fetchef. If you face him solo, he will always face you. It makes it much easier for him to perform such techniques. Keep that in mind. I think Ryu dyed his hair blonde. Not quite, Fidget. You're facing Ken, Ryu's best friend in the ring. Is he similar to Ryu in that regard? In ways, yes he is. However, he is faster than his friend and is stronger in some attacks. 
Unlike Ryu, he's also more of a show-off and will be flashier with his attacks. Flashier moves, huh? If we're not careful, he might give you a run for your money, Dust. If he's too busy thinking with his ego more than his fist, then this fight will be over before it began. Don't think so boldly, Dust. Like Ryu, Ken is also a master of the Hado, and has faced many powerful foes like his friend, so don't think you can get by as easily as you thought. Oh, that sword is huge! I think it might be even bigger than you, Aura. Size doesn't matter, Dust. Oh, I think it does. I mean, with a big sword like that, wouldn't they have a better chance of hitting someone? I think weight would have to be considered as well. Will you two focus? Cloud has an ability called Limit Break. After charging it up, he can power up one of his attacks to deal extra damage. He can buff up an attack? Could he use it to help him recover? That he can, Fidget. However, if he's not careful with his recovery, he could find himself plummeting to the pits below. Got it. And don't worry, Ara. I won't be considering getting a bigger sword. I wasn't worried. But considering you mentioned that without warning... Makes me start to worry. Your next opponent appears to be Corrin. Well, why are they walking around barefooted? Doesn't that hurt? We face many fighters from other races, Fidget. I'm pretty sure Corrin has been trained to fight barefooted, to work through any minor pain as they fight onwards. Let's focus for now. If you're not too careful with your dodging, Corrin's ranged attack can leave you stunned for a moment, give him the perfect chance to come in for a strike. I still wonder if it hurts to walk without shoes. Well, aren't you not wearing any shoes? Yes, but why the need to walk when I can fly? I thought you were scared of heights. Quiet! She's, uh, certainly got long legs. Ara, who is this? That is Bayonetta, a witch who spends her time hunting angels. Oh, oh my, poor pet. Wait, does she have weapons on her feet? Correct, as well as wielding two, she also has two others for a faster firing rate. She can also summon hands and feet from another dimension known as Wicked Weaves. This will certainly be an interesting fight. Be wary, Dust. She also has a Witch Time ability. Get too close and she'll slow you down with Witch Time. Summoning hands and feet from another dimension. Do you think she can do that with food? We just ate. Are you seriously still hungry? I was just asking! So, am I fighting a squid? Hmm. I think it's a kid. That's an inkling. They attack with that ink weaponry. If you get covered in it, they can deal extra damage. Ah! Keep them away from me! Ink is such a pain to get out of my fur! Yeah, I think it'll be best if we avoid them at all cost. I won't want to get any on myself, either. I quite like to keep these clothes clean. Aren't they the only clothes you have? That's not the point right now. Indeed it isn't. But what's easy to note is that the inkling can run out and will be vulnerable when refilling. Got it. Let's go. Doesn't this guy seem a bit... big? You think he's too big? Apparently not, considering Ridley is here and fighting us next. Alright, so what can you tell me about him? Ridley is the leader of the Space Pirates, a vicious group that Samus has encountered multiple times. Enemies with Samus? Oh dear. He can grab and drag you across the floor, and even go for a stab attack to pierce you and paralyze you for a brief moment. He certainly isn't messing around. But I suppose he's a leader for a reason. Very interesting. Is something the matter, Aura? My apologies. It's honestly fascinating to see a weapon that has been passed down from generation to generation. You mean the whip he's holding? I do. Simon Belmont is a descendant of the legendary vampire hunters, the Belmont family. The whip he wields is the vampire killer, a whip almost as old as legend. The same whip that has taken down the vile Count Dracula over and over again. Are you gonna be okay, Aura? Should we give you and the whip some alone time? That won't be necessary. Dust, Simon's whip has some range and can be twirled to block projectiles. But keep in mind, it is indeed a thin whip, so it doesn't have much in terms of wide spacing. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Ara. It seems your next challenger is Richter Belmont, a descendant of Simon Belmont. Alright, so what's special about him? He's similar to his ancestor, they both throw the cross in the holy water. However, Richter is more acquainted with his items, even after being saved from Alucard, the son of Dracula. Dracula had a child? That... that's... Uh, that's an image forever burned into my mind. Wait, being saved? Alucard is an ally? Correct. His mother was a human and tried to teach her husband Dracula to love the humans. However, she was killed, but was able to teach her son well. Oh, wow. That's... That's such a sad tale. We've all lost people, Fidget. 
It's a thing to bear when the life threat calls. But we all must keep them in our hearts and carry on with the life they wanted us to have. Wise words, Dust. Let us proceed to the fight. The crocodile is massive! That's not any crocodile fidget. That's King K. Rool, the leader of the Kremlins that Donkey Kong has fought in the past. He is quite a big guy, isn't he? He is, and he is quite heavy. Try and use that to your advantage, but make sure you're not above King K. Rool when he recovers. Well, you say he's heavy, right? So, what if we can get him further down? Then he won't be able to recover. Not quite. He pulls out a propeller that could bring him back up, get caught in it, and you'll merely wish you didn't. That stomach... it's shiny. I can almost see my reflection from over here. Maybe if we try damaging it, the king won't be able to deal that much of a blow to us should he use it in battle. Hey Dust, isn't that Colleen over there? I think it might be. Let's see why she's here. And I'm going to stop you before you two make fools of yourselves. That's not Colleen, that's Isabel, the village's assistant. Oh wait, the assistant of the mayor? Why is she here? And who's running the city? I guess she wanted a promotion and decided to help. Isabel can use a fishing rod to grab items that are far away and even fight as such to yourself. Once caught, she can throw you away with ease. Bringing a fishing rod into battle? That's... certainly a creative way to defend yourself. Now I'm thinking if politicians sorted out their debates by duking it out in arm-in-arm -arm battle, and the winners get the votes! Don't think too hard, Fidget. If Gaius and Mayor Brown would be in that round, we'd know the winner before it began. That's a big gaff. I don't like the way it looks at us. Also, why does it have a belt that's on fire? That's Incineroar, a fire and dark type Pokemon. After evolving from a litten, it took a liking to wrestling. So it has wrestling style moves then? Correct, Dust. He also has his own form of a counter called Revenge, which gives his next attack the extra punch it needs. This will certainly be an interesting one to fight. Do keep in mind that after performing a move, Incineroar does like to pose for the audience leaving him open for an attack. Use this to your advantage if you want to claim victory in this battle. <laughs> Pose for the audience. That's a wrestler, all right. This... This is a joke, right? I'm seriously not fighting this potted plant, am I? I... Don't think so, Dust. I... I think it's actually standing and getting ready for a fight. Fidget is correct. The piranha plant is your next foe, and a cunning one at that. So... What am I looking out for? The piranha plant can change its shape to give itself spikes to swipe you with and even changing it to one of poison to spit at you. Poison spit? I think we dealt with enough of those in the Suramon caverns. And I think we're going to be seeing more of them with this plant. Be wary of your opponent's dust. More challengers are coming far and wide to be in this tournament. A plant isn't out of the question. Got it. Who am I fighting next, Ara? It would appear you're fighting Joker, a student wrongfully accused of assault and currently on probation. A wrong accusation of assault? Well, judging by the knife and gun, he's certainly proving his innocence. He uses those to hunt down shadows, which turn into Persona to help fight others to bring justice. Persona? You mean he fights people with other personalities? Something like that. Personas are spirits that aid others in battle. Even Joker has one. Should he bring it out in battle, it will certainly give him more strength for a limited time. Then he'll have to send the Persona away. So if he brings up the Persona, maybe we'll need to hang back a bit and be careful with our next attacks. I never took you for a battle planner, Fidget. Hmph! I'll have you know that I think of battle plans to get the fight over and done with so I can go and eat! I'm hungry! Your next challenger is Hero. Okay... So, what's his name? That is his name. His name is Hero. Who names their child Hero? What if he became a villain? <clears throat> Let's focus on the task at hand. He can use mana to cast various spells at random. Should he run out, he resorts to attacking with the sword. So he's a mage with a lot of spells. Is there a theme to them? Not from what I've seen. They seem to be at random, and even the hero himself knows what could appear from what he casts. He doesn't know his own spells? That's very dangerous. It could make things easy for us if they affect him too. But let's approach him with caution as we do this. Is it? Walking its pet bird? Banjo and Kazooie, the bear and bird duo. They've gone on many adventures together. Kazooie likes to live in Banjo's bag most of the time. So... A bird flies... but stays in a bag. Don't look at me, I'm actually flying! Yes, but I don't have a bag on my back. Trust me, with the stuff you put in your inventory, I prefer to fly. Focus, you two. Dust, be mindful of Banjo's invincibility dash. While it is extremely powerful, Banjo can only do it a limited number of times. Up to five, specifically. 
Once he runs out, you might have an easier time against him. This guy is certainly ripped. And he likes to grow out his hair. You have encountered Terry, a strong fighter indeed. What tricks does he have up his sleeve? In a way, he's similar to Ryu and Ken with the moves he can pull off. So, should we think similar to them? Not quite, Fidget. Terry has prepared many moves in his arsenal. Even the slightest movement could give his next attack a more powerful blow. This one seems like an interesting opponent to say the least. You should watch out with the amount of damage laid onto Terry. If hit enough, he might be tempted to hit you with the strongest moves. One of his famous being the Buster Wolf. Where do these fighters learn such moves? Could it even be possible for us to learn them? Honestly, this is nothing new. I'm just accepting everything at this point. This character is certainly an interesting one. It seems you've encountered Byleth, a professor at the Officer's Academy. An academy where they teach students to become officers? So this professor must have some combat experience. Indeed. Once a mercenary, they change their ways to teach and fight alongside students in the field of battle. So what should I look out for? Byleth carries many weapons in this fight, all used to their advantage. Some they prefer to charge up for a devastating blow. Try and use that timing to your advantage. I see that Byleth has a chain of sorts. That's actually part of their sword, which they use to recover by clinging it to the stage. However, if you're above them, they will instead latch onto you and get a higher boost up. Say, Dust, have you ever thought of teaching? With your skills in the Dust Storm and the Double Jump, you could teach this to the Moonbloods. I never actually thought about that, Fidget. But that doesn't sound too bad of an idea. What is with her arms? And why are they made of noodles? It would seem your next opponent is Min Min, a well-known worker for the Nintendo Noodle House. That doesn't explain anything about her arms, Zara. My apologies, Dust. Despite her looks, Min Min actually has normal human arms. Though these weapons are what she uses to attack her enemies in the ring. It's the more popular sport where she's from, with some even using their hair for combat. So she can attack us from such a long range? She'll be impossible to hit! Not quite, Fidget. While she may have the upper hand in distance, Dust actually has the advantage with his one-on-one -on -one combat skills. So, I block her attack and move in for the kill? Precisely. But watch out for her arm change. She could change her right arm seemingly on a whim. If you're not careful, you might have a megawatt in your face and be set right off the stage. You said she ran a noodle shop, right, Ara? Fidget. Fight first, noodles later. Those noodles better be worth it! Nintendo, here we come! What is that over there? He's certainly a unique fighter. I don't see any of his body bending. Does he even have knees? Steve may look to be limited with his movements, but that won't stop him from achieving victory. So, what's this guy's deal? Is he gonna block us to death? In a way, yes. What? what? Steve hails from a world made entirely of blocks. He mines for better tools and uses stuff like stone, dirt, and wood to create blocks in the air that could disobey the current laws of physics. Spawning blocks out of thin air? Th that's impossible! And yet, Steve does it like second nature. He will also spawn a minecart chase after you, and if you're not too careful, you may find yourself trapped in it and fly off stage. Though if you're not too hurt, you should be able to get out easier. Though you do need to keep an eye on your surroundings. If you're too careless, Steve will place a TNT block in your blind spot and trigger from a safe distance. That's not the end of it, is it? I'm afraid not, Dust. When Steve thinks he's far from you, he will start to dig the ground for resources. Try and stop him from doing so. If you can, it'll prevent him from getting more blocks, and even prevent him from getting gold and diamond, which will upgrade his weapons for massive amounts of damage. Ugh, this guy is just so confusing! Who needs all that arsenal for a stupid fight? And look at his eyes! His soulless eyes! Fidget, you need to calm down. The sooner your head is in the game, the sooner we can defeat Steve and take a break from all the blocks. What's wrong, Dust? Uh, I can't tell what's longer, his hair or his sword. Sephiroth's sword is definitely the longer of the two. Once seen as a hero in the eyes of many, he's now considered one of the greatest beings of evil known to mankind. And here's a man of evil joining a fighting tournament. Great. Relax, Dust. You still have a chance in this fight. Well, with a sword that long, he's gonna be impossible to get close to! Though Sephiroth may have the advantage in length, he does leave himself wide open for attacks. No matter the slash, he has a small cooldown period. Use this to your advantage to land your next strike. Got it. Though, one thing I don't get is, Cloud warned us of a one-winged attack. Though, I don't see any wings on him. When you've landed enough successful hits, Sephiroth will enter his winged form. Using this ability helps him move faster, and even give him a triple jump. Though if conditions favour you more, 
it could take longer for him to grow his wing. So he's like a one-winged angel of sorts? Well, if that's your assumption of a fidget. It's like there's something inside of him, burning inside with violent anger. Maybe try saying that in the Nimbath or Moonblood tongue. It might sound much cooler. What the? The, the fighter just changed form! I didn't even see where she went! Not even my sixth sense is picking up on it! Much like the Ice Climbers, you're fighting two opponents here, Dust. Pyra and Mithra, both are living weapons known as Aegis. Living weapons? So, what, they're like living swords? Precisely. In fact, they are the sword that they're holding. So, they're holding themselves as they use themselves to fight? How, how does that make sense? Try not to think too hard on it, Fidget. Dust, be on guard at all times. The two have different fighting styles. Pyra is slow, but is a heavy hitter while Mithra is fast but doesn't bring as much pain. So all I need to do is keep my distance to bring Mithra out then. Surely that will give me a better advantage. That would be an unwise decision. The two can swap on a whim. They work well together and can have you seen double if you let your guard down. So, Ara, how come you don't have a body outside of your sword? That's a point. These two are one sword. You're just one talking sword. Wouldn't it be easier for you? <laughs> The youthful weapons of today have it so easy to project themselves. Hmm, this guy... What's the matter, Fidget? It's hard to tell. He seems like a normal human, but my sixth sense is picking up something... weird inside of him. Your senses aren't betraying you, Fidget. Though Kazuya does have the genes of the devil inside of him, he's not a man to be feared. A human that's part demon that chooses to fight? Correct. Though Kazuya uses the demon side of him to help with his attacks. So the devil side gives him more power? Well, a devil punch would be much stronger than a normal punch. Though in my opinion, that's the least of your worries. What do you mean? Kazuya is a fighter first and foremost, but unlike the ones you've encountered previously, he has a lot more combo attacks up his sleeve. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I mean, we faced Ryu, Ken, and Terry, and they have more moves than what we're used to. A valid point. However, Kazuya has even more than them. Some would argue he has double the possible moves compared to all the fighters in this tournament. Ah, oh, great. So, I have to look out for much more than the norm. Well, I have some combos of my own, so maybe I'll try and unleash them on him. Oh, I'm sure you do, Mr. XXXXN from whence it came. <laughs> I don't see you slamming monsters to the ground in a badass way. Huh. That's a weird sword he's wielding. Is that even a sword? I can't really see him cutting anything up with that. That isn't a sword Sora has in his possession, you two. It is the Keyblade, a powerful weapon that he uses to help slay the Heartless in the various worlds he travels to. Well, you'd think it would be sharper despite being called a Keyblade. You say he travels to other worlds? As in he ventures beyond the stars? Indeed, and throughout his adventures, He's always had a strong heart and the trusty Keyblade by his side. Right. So, what should I look out for in this fight? Sora isn't pulling any punches in this fight. He'll be using all the tricks he's learned on the path to becoming a Keyblade Master. He'll be using a mix of magic and physical based attacks. Oh boy, this is gonna be one tough opponent. In a way, but keep in mind he's not invincible. Once you've learned his attacks, you should be able to get the upper hand. Just watch out if you're near a ledge. He could use his various skills to get you airborne and knocked off in the blink of an eye. Hope you're ready for this one, Fidget. If we're to win this tournament, we'll need to focus in this fight. Oh, I'm ready for this. But something doesn't seem right. Hmm? What do you mean? Well, it's just... It kind of feels like something's missing. Like, Sora shouldn't be fighting alone. Like, maybe Duck Hunt Duo should be with him? Huh. Now that you mention it, it does seem a bit off. Does he normally fight alone, Ara? Well, not really. But it's not a topic that's easy to explain. You're better off not thinking about it too much. Okay, okay I, I believe, believe you. you. Is... is that me? And me! But with different fur. Ara, what's going on? I... I have no idea. I, I've never seen anything like it. Don't lie to me! I'm not lying to you, Dust. Whatever this is, we can't let it distract us from the fighter hand. If this doppelganger is indeed you, 
then we can assume the strength is the same. You should be familiar with your own combat moves. This is seriously creeping me out, Dust. Does this mean there's another Jank and another Cassius? I... I don't know, Fidget. We should just keep fighting for now. We need to rid the world of this shameless copy.